And China has kicked off its 14th annual parliamentary meetings, which investors are watching closely for, for signs on economic stimulus. The meetings, known as the two sessions, release more details on policy plans such as the GDP target for the year. As of this moment, officials are presenting the report and from March 5th to 11th, the meetings will be held. My colleague Haim has more on this. Take a look. What is China's two session, uh, sessions gathering and why does it matter? The two sessions are simultaneous meetings of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. While the National People's Congress is the legislative body, the Consultative Conference is a united front political advisory and consultation organization with no legislative functions. Now, what to watch out for at China's major political meeting of this year? First on the agenda will be Premier Li Xiang's announcement of China's GDP growth goal for 2024. Li Xiang will likely reveal a growth target of around 5%. The government report could entail economic strategy as well with growth targets, deficit target. And this may be at a major turning point after four decades of growth that propelled China into a position of economic and geopolitical power. Then, smaller scale investments in science and technology could be on the agenda as well. High among those worries are national defense and security. In, and chi increase in China's military budget, which is second only to the United States. That will also be something to watch out for. Beijing is also expected to use these two sessions to complete the transition to their successors. It could possibly see a new foreign minister, new defense minister or new state councillors. And for more on the ongoing two sessions meeting in China, a Voice of America correspondent Bill Gallo sends us this report from Beijing on potential changes to the anti-secession law and the leadership's latest take on Taiwan. Take a look. Yeah, I think it's expected that Taiwan will come up. It usually comes up in these kinds of settings. It's unclear how sort of aggressive uh, the language will be. Uh, these things are always very watched very closely for the slightest change in language and how they talk about Taiwan. Even if there's some uh, change that may not seem important at, at some level to the casual observer, maybe if there is some language that seems a bit more impatient, you know, uh, China wants to unify with Taiwan, and obviously it's taking a more aggressive approach. It's sort of reflected in its official policy documents and statements. It's casually, uh, it's steadily getting more aggressive and impatient. We may see that this week. It is a tense time in China, as you mentioned. Uh, the uh, Taiwan president is going to be, uh, the new Taiwanese president is going to be inaugurated in May. Uh, this is a man who China does not like at all. It, it views him as a separatist. And uh, it, it will do pretty much many things to pressure him ahead of and during his administration. It's not clear, though, that really China wants to provoke too much, I think. There is an expectation that maybe China doesn't need another problem. So while it may sort of push on Taiwan, I don't think we'll get any huge sort of uh, bombastic rhetoric uh, on that issue th during this week.